Hey, Mama Tree here. I wanted to talk about why it's important to come out of the broom closet and if you're gonna do it, some ways that you might find that to be a little easier and more gentle. So why it's important, there's a lot of reasons. For one, we deserve to be ourselves. We deserve to live a life expressing ourselves in the way that we choose without fear of some kind of reprisal, fear of being ostracized or kicked out, excluded, bullied, all of those things. Um, but also, I think in the really larger sense of what's happening on the planet right now, the, the earth needs us to come out of our closets slowly, gently, demonstrating that there are ways to be in society, to be contributing, caring members of local communities and not be a part of the dominant local belief system. Now where I live, the dominant local belief system is Christianity, but I think this applies to any place. If you're a witch or a pagan and you don't fit into the local scene, because your beliefs are different, then you probably feel at risk by putting yourself out there. And that risk is real. It's not that long ago that we were burned alive. And there are people uh, being persecuted right now in smaller ways than death, but it's still persecution, you know, harassment at work, for instance, or um, harassment in the school system. You can see my videos where I talk about religious bullying, true stories, um, not pretty ones. Okay, so one of the most important reasons to come out is to start to normalize the idea that the community we're in is more diverse. So people might assume that everybody around them who looks like them has the same kind of beliefs. But that's not necessarily true. And as long as we're hiding our true natures, people won't know that there are good, kind, friendly people in the community who consider themselves to be something other than Christian. So, if you decide to come out of the closet, the broom closet, there's a couple of strategies that can make this go more smoothly. For one, we're gonna get what we expect. So if you're holding beliefs that everyone is going to bully me, everyone is going to hate me, everything will be terrible, then guess what? That's what you're creating. And so don't go there. <laughs> Look around and notice the beauty, the kindness. Look at the groups of people, the churches, who are spending time picking up trash, who are spending time providing school supplies and shoes to children, the ones who are feeding the um, elderly and the homeless. Look at the examples of beautiful things that are being done in the name of Jesus Christ or whatever the local religion is in your area. So tune in to the good part and work on seeing people who are different than you in a positive light. Work on realizing that their expression of faith is beautiful and perfect for them. Because you know what? That's what you want to feel in return. So if you go around making statements, negative statements about the way the Christians are, or the way the Muslims are, or the way the Jewish people are, then you're going to get a lot more negativity back at you. That's one. So pay attention to what you're thinking and feeling about people who you perceive as different than you. Very important. This could take you a year. It's worth it. Take the time to really edit the thoughts and feelings. Another thing that I feel is really important to successfully, gently coming out 
is not to do so in a hugely public way all at once. Pick a smaller group of people and create a feeling of safety. Now, how do you do that? Well, if you're spending time with a small group of people and during that time, they get to know the real you. They see you as an emissary of light. You're spreading love. You're doing good work in the world. They trust you. They know you. You don't discuss faith, but they feel your faith radiating, divine light radiating. I did that on purpose, by the way, sitting in the light, sitting in the shadow. <laughs> Hopefully it's not distracting. <laughs> Anyways, let them really feel you and love you. And then find a way to just work it into the conversation. And be vulnerable when you do that. Say, you know what, I've had a lot of social anxiety over the years. Oh, really? Why is that? Well, <laughs> because I don't believe the way that I perceive everyone else believes. So, when we're vulnerable with someone who already feels love and care towards us, that moment of vulnerability causes them to radiate their love and care out to us and create a safe space energetically. Um, in my own experience, I've been in and out of the closet a lot over the years. I'm 42 now. In my 20s, I was very out of the closet. I was young. I was free and wild and rebellious and I lived in South Florida and it really was a very diverse and eclectic group of people. I didn't feel a lot of risk and it was a lot of people who I had only known a year or two so their opinions of me didn't matter that much. Then in my 30s I worked for uh, a federal land management agency. Well from age 25 to 40 and at different points in time in small teams where I bonded with someone or a small group of people and felt really safe, just like I was sharing a moment ago, I could come out. But in a larger way, I didn't really find a platform for that until I was working on a project about diversity and inclusion that was sponsored by the Civil Rights Program in Washington and Oregon. And, um, because it's a federal agency, we had offices everywhere. So I was in Washington and Oregon. I live in the South normally, but I was out of state. And I was in a group of uh, about 50 people. And the whole purpose of our meeting and training and learning opportunity was that we should feel more respectful and uh, inclusive of people who were different, whether that was their race or their sexuality or whatever. So I experimented in those places where the safety was created by the intent that drew the people together and by the fact that a federal agency has rules that you can't harass people, um, although it happens still, but you're not supposed to. So. I took some risks, put myself out there at a table in which we were doing a group exercise. And there was a man there from the Deep South, a beautiful Christian man who was, to my mind, very much like the local community in which I was raised and the one in which I made my home now. And he was kind and he was loving and he was curious and I felt so much healing and so much nurturing just from that exchange with him and so no I didn't have to make it public for 600 or a thousand people who live nearby but letting the guard down and letting someone come in 
is a really beautiful and healing experience. So I'm just going to recap a little bit. Edit your thinking about people who aren't like you. Take time to create a safe space in which you're with people who already know and love you by your behaviors and your deeds and not by the words you use to define your beliefs. And third, gently and slowly, carefully share with people that you feel safe with. And if you do these things over time, you can feel stronger and safer and you can let more of your inner light shine. So I believe in you and I love you guys and good luck.